let's crack on, shall we? This is the Masters game. Uh, this was Bazoo versus Tobomot, recorded by Carlo live last week. Um, check out all the merch and stuff in the description below. Um, but yes, uh, Tobomot versus Bazoo. Um, so let's get to it. Quarterfinal. Quarterfinal. We have uh, we have Starks versus Free Folk. Um, so we're gonna come in. We're about halfway through the first round, partly because uh, not a lot happened, and also partly because you know I. I, I can't record properly. No, I can't. Um, what we have is uh, we, of course, have. Uh, let me double check. But uh, here, here we stand. Honed, honed, honed and ready. I, I always get those ones confused. Um, uh, what, here, we game, here we honed and here we honed and start and ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our game mode was honed and ready, of course. So we have the uh, five. Uh, we have five objectives in a cross. Um, our center objective has a random um, random additional effect, and in this game mode, it is mute NCU. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we see in the very center of the map there. Um, on the right-hand side, we have Bazoo, who's playing Free Folk, and he has brought his stylist with him. Um, it is interesting. Um, it has some skin changes, a lot of things that you'd expect to see. We see a uh, Harmor attachment. We see a relatively standard NCU setup of uh, Mance, um egret and lady val um but we do have uh something which i haven't seen competitive play for quite a while which is uh we have ourselves um some cave dweller savages with tormund in as well so uh quite an investment there that unit is the uh, second one in when you look at the camera on the right hand side the second unit in so we'll see what happens there um Steyr is um the center unit on the right hand side in the dark yeah just about there where mickey's uh, showing us that that will be Steyr, and he is in the um the follows of the bone so mm -hmm. we have Steyr and follows of bone um and uh the cave dweller savages uh with um Tormund's giant spain on yeah. the other side uh for the starks we see tobo mott bringing uh howland and he has brought with him some uh, Tully Cavaliers, um, some big heavy hitters, but he's also brought with him two units of Stormcrow Mercenaries, one bringing Rickon and Osha, and the other unit of Stormcrow Mercenaries to bring with him Mira. Those two are on the flanks looking to take those uh, objectives close to the walls. And we see ourselves uh, our classic brand berserkers mm -hmm. right in the center of the map, pointing at that center objective. So absolute heavy hitters there. Um, flanked by the Tully Cavaliers, and our final unit, uh, which is between the um, Bram Berserkers and the far edge of the board, is uh, a unit of Housebottom Cutthroats. Uh, interesting uh, five-point unit there with no um, no attachments, nothing else. Interesting to go for the Cutthroats there. When I think that uh, Stark Spawn Swords generally kind of fill that slot, people go for it Yeah. in a Stark list. Uh, he brings Howland... Varys and Sansa, so uh, something of a uh, power three combo themselves, um, and uh, yeah, very uh, very much, you know, game. Uh, game do we on. know? Do we know what the center objective is? Uh, it's mute that? NCU. Mute NCU. Yeah, cool. I just I got yeah. that one in my head. Um, right. So before we do start, um, if anyone thinks the title's wrong, I have refreshed it, but you will have to uh, press F five on your stream to get the refresh title. I do apologize, guys. That's my bad. Uh, oh wow, my stream manager there's just updated. We've got 12 viewers. Hopefully, most of you guys are from the uh, session we just did. Um, and Brett's making himself known as well. Um, would we ever see Mercs without Starks or the occasional Lannister? Um, I don't know. I think you might see. I think you might see Mercs uh, appear without without Starks. I think you could see some Mercs in Targaryen soon enough. I think some Stormcrow Mercs. Mm. I think there's some some options. Uh, interestingly, though, you know they they are probably the two factions who should be using Mercs, Lannisters, because they'll buy their way into it, and Starks because they half own the Boltons anyway. So you know. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, uh, so it's almost thematic. It's almost like it thematically happened. If uh, only. Let, let, let's uh, let's get the game going because to be yep. honest, not uh, you know it's first uh, not not loads uh, super interesting is going to go on as we know, uh, but uh, you know that said. Guys, this game is going to get good. I've seen it. This game gets good. Do not give up on it. There are some brilliant moves, brilliant plays, and this game goes right to the wire. If you already know the result, well, you know, that's a slight spoiler. 
but uh, this game is an interesting one. So we see, I mean, standard, I mean, there's not much to say about uh, the first turn. Um, I know the NCU board is cut off um, from the uh, the um, from the video recording there. It's not that important for turn one. It's full. Uh, we saw Mance letters, Craster um, onto the swords and Ugrit onto the crowns with Howland and Sansa going onto bags and horses, mm -hmm. respectively. Uh, as we can see, the, the kind of like overall effect there was basically nothing happened um, we're, we're seeing we're seeing mance trying to uh load up some tokens onto the tully cavaliers basically um yeah. that's the effect that the free folk player is looking for in early rounds he's looking to start to build up that bank if you're running mance ncu and really competitively at the moment i think you should be running mance ncu he is phenomenal Superb. like he's the um for what you lose not being able to take Varys, you regain being able to have Mance mm -hmm. uh, in the Free Folk at the moment. Um, Mance makes their NCU setup powerful, and uh, considering that you have to run one four-pointer anyway, he should probably be it. I actually favor him over Steyr, but he is running a Steyr list, so, you know, Steyr isn't even a choice here. Mance is an absolute go-to, and um, yeah, I mean, I will, I'll be straight up honest to any Free Folk players out there. You, you will know by this point that I play a lot of Free Folk. I don't play Mance Commander because Mance Commander means I can't play in Mance NCU. People rave about mm -hmm. Steer, but Mance is superb. And um, actually, like the one commander that I want to use Mance most with, irony, is Mance Commander. Mance Commander with a Mance NCU would be phenomenal. But Obviously, it's, not the same, it's the same throughout everything, though. Imagine a Harmer Commander with Harmer Attachment. Oh, <laughs> steer with steer. <laughs> yeah. Reactivate but, you know. a giant. Anyway, yes. Um, <laughs> that's just free folk for you. I can't imagine much in the way of Brynden Outrider with Brynden Outrider. <laughs> um, all right then. Um, so yeah, so it's still forget, shifting ready. around. Tone Ready is a very interesting game mode. Is uh, that what it's and called? I, do like it. I like it a lot. Um, it has the five. <laughs> fixed um, objectives they're all worth one point except that the center one is worth that additional um that additional effect which in this is mute ncu mm -hmm. um, but when you control one of these objectives at the end of the round you will be shot by d3 plus two hits not an attack so there's no morale damage coming off the back of it um d3 plus two hits against each unit controlling one of these objectives at the end of the round this is very important to me because it means that you can't just pick up these objectives with the cheapest, nastiest, freest unit you can grab. You can't just stick your direwolf on there and think, well, that's it sorted for the game. And you have to think about a unit such as um, the Stumper Mercenaries or Free Folk Raiders or Free Folk Trappers are usual kind of power plays to babysit our objectives they're not foregone conclusions that they will survive the game without you putting some additional resources in. Mm -hmm. We see Bog Devil Ambush get played here. Um, I mean, it's a Howland card that just pretty much wants to come out whenever you can. There's no real obvious targets. But, not uh, in this he's game. Going in on, he's going in on Mance Trappers here. Uh, not Mance, sorry. Um, uh, duh, 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 what's name? Just Harmer. the Harmer Trappers. Harmer attachment, uh, going in on Harmer Attachment Trappers, and we see quite a heavy dent in terms of numbers already. Between the crowns and um, and Bog Devil Ambush, she's actually already lost over a rank. Yeah, five five wounds there. Um, yeah. Classic TTS. Even when it's not live, TTS problems with uh, Trace. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we see the Tully Cav coming forward as well, filling the gap. Um, that's pretty much the end of uh, round one. Pretty much. Yeah, I think I there think might be uh, like a small activation on the far flank. It. We're going to come on in to uh, clean up, I think, um, Summer, who's up at the top. Shaggy Dog is on the near side here. Mm -hmm. Summer up at the top still needs to move. Um, so, but, uh, what I would. What but yeah. I did want to say about Bazu's list while we've got the opportunity then. Um, and we see round two beginning. Bazu's list, I don't dislike it. Uh, I don't dislike Bazu's list, but I also don't. 100% like it either. I think it has some some glaring issues as another Free Folk player. Um, and uh, we'll see how that comes out. And I actually think that it is the Cave Dweller Tormund unit, which although I love Cave Dwellers and Tormund being used in a list, 
I actually think that that's a big seven point bait that uh, yeah. yeah. It's interesting that they're, they're not. It's not a unit that sees a lot of normal competitive play. Uh, and I, I, I tell you why, uh, straight away. Walder in the competitive meta right now makes two point attachments difficult, and your grit yeah. again turns like your grit's not a counter to Walder for your two point attachment. No. Um, but he's come up against the non walded based list. Of Let's course. See if can bring that seven point value in that unit. And um, Tobomot is definitely running a more um, traditional a traditional kind of Stark list that we see. It's got two direwolves, um, bringing those cheap attachments. It's even bringing uh, multiples of those um, Stormcrow Mercenaries to bring the cost of those attachments down um, using uh, Mirror Reads, also interesting, uh, possibly related to thinking that Stark Mirrors will come up mm -hmm. uh, for the trap effect. Um, and then just the power play that is uh, running Tully Cavaliers and uh, Bran Berserkers. You know, Bran, Bran isn't even, when you think about it these days, Bran isn't even really brought for summer. It's just an absolute bonus icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. Bran himself in the Berserkers has or Hodor more specifically and skin changing has such a huge big effect on that unit there is very few things that can stand up to it yep so we see there that the um that was a varus token used on to uh to mance and it failed failed mance uh failed varus token onto mance um mance coming down onto that central unit is that the uh that's uh, that's Bram that's the Bram yeah yeah, yeah. And we see horses coming out, and I think if I was him, I would just yeah, you just move the uh, move that unit forward, get them stuck in. Uh, still a lot of posturing at this stage, obviously. Um, they both look like uh, they're both going to claim their side objectives, and it's going to be a question over who's going to you know grab and control that center, who's going to have the control over that fifth while they work for advantage on the sides mm -hmm. if you uh, if you were to switch off an ncu oh. here who do you switch off as the stark player you switch off mance right pretty much uh yeah for me for me you take off mance straight away um as the start as the free folk player who would you turn off it's interesting um i i I think I so I, I can't keep Sansa off for the whole game. So um, and she's only got that one use effect. So they will just that would delay it. I doubt that I'm going to control it the whole time. You could say the same about Varys um, because you know he can hold the tokens and then just burn them later. But I think that if you think that the game is going to be decided in a cluster of like the second, third, fourth turn. If you can have him off during that period, then it will be too late for him to come back and save you. So I think Varys is a good choice. If you think you can only control it for a very short period of time, then Howland's your, th Howland's your man because he's going to have an effect, whereas the other two are just delays. But personally, I go for Varys because the period of time that you can switch him off can have such a massive effect on the game. I agree. You could say the same for Sansa, but she can use it like as soon as she comes back on, she can go and grab the card. Whereas Varys, I'm in control of when I'm activating my MCUs, and if I can just get him switched off and then know that I'm taking that board with control, it's a it's a big it's a big difference in terms of like mm -hmm. tempo, flow, and all those things. I'd actually be tempted, depending on the number of tokens that Varys had left, I would be tempted as a free folk player to go for, for Sansa um, because specifically it shuts down the ability for uh, for Tobo Mott here to actually claim back the, the, the pressure. He It makes it a lot harder for him to actually get that token back on his side um, because he okay. can't just pull out the cards he wants and go, right, well, I need this charge to come off. Here it is coming off. Um, yeah. But that also, again you know, is there, there, there is big yeah. value in uh, Varus as the game goes on later when we're talking about um, mm -hmm. you know being able to block endless horde and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so you know, Varus, you know, just delaying Varus can be useful. Obviously, if you can switch him off for the whole game, then you know you've probably won. You've you've got control of that center objective for the entire game. So what we're talking about is we're talking about if there's a back and forth. Yeah. And with control being based on number of ranks and stuff like that, you can't. 
ensure that there isn't going to be a window when he switches back on and just starts to use his tokens again. Uh, so yeah, like like I say, if you're very conservative, you go Howland yeah. just because you know you're going to get something out of it. Him being switched off. If you switch him off when he activates, he doesn't get placed. If you switch him off when he's already placed, you'll turn him off at least. You know, you can get rid of that minus one. And that minus one is always just having an undercurrent of effect. He can't use that later rather than earlier. So he's the more more consistent choice. But I like Varys. Or more to the point, I don't like Varys. I don't like how much he's going to control my game plan. So I probably want to switch him off if possible. That's fair enough. Well, um, what's interesting here is we see um, we th there's quite a lot of trappers um, on the um, on uh, on Bazoo's side. Um, I'm not actually 100% sure. I believe that the second unit in from the top side is uh, is trappers. The very top unit is a unit of raiders. Um, and down on this side, we have. Um, the third unit from the bottom is definitely trappers and the unit at the very bottom i think is raiders again i think it's uh, cave uh, raiders into cave dweller savages into trappers so there are two units of trappers which cover most of the board so bazu uh, sorry tobermott does have to be very careful with what he does with his direwolves because there is a good coverage in terms of being able to uh, just kill them off mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why the game mode's not favored to Starks is they can't just sit on objectives with them, and he has to be very careful about being aggressive with them. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, all right, so um, we see here, we see here the uh, this is the skin changer um, trappers at this end, I believe. Yeah, this is skin changer trappers here. We see there, and he's gone for the. Oh. Uh, is he going for a wolf? That that I forgot to mention, there are two skin changes. We see a single bear. We also see, quite interestingly, we see a wolf, yeah. not an eagle, as the other choice. So this unit of trappers who we're looking at, um, they have their attack, uh, their attack sphere up right now. They have a wolf skin changer. Um, it is actually a very astute move, and you will see that it comes in to having a huge effect. Um, I will say as a free folk player this is a, a strategy that i've been trying to talk about and i know i've mentioned it a couple of times saying that cds are back um with you carlo but uh mm -hmm. mammoths and cave dwellers savages there's a build there somewhere that i'm trying to work out and I've, I've got what looks like the start of it but using tormund because tormund's vulnerable tokens they give out combined with the wolves uh, and this is the thing tormund combined with wolves actually starts to work i think it's the only viable mm -hmm. build for work four wolves mm -hmm. be that torment commander or torment attachment um it's the only viable build for wolves but there's a viable build for them and i think mammoths trampling over things eliminating a rank allowing the cave dwellers to then be active and to be, place even yeah. more vulnerables to do more things actually i really think that there's a build there um and i'm looking at this for uh, particularly uh rose knights this is a this is a screwing yeah. up Rose Knights build. Yeah. Um I think I think there's some really interesting subtle changes coming to like people looking at the mammoths are like, mm -hmm. oh my god, it's just like some power piece. But I think that it will subtly change the dynamic of the faction. Um mm -hmm. you no longer want to fill your own entire deployment zone, I think, because because of the risk of your own uh panic based trample going across your own unit. I would love to just be able to stick that mammoth like 12 inches away from the rest of my army like it's like you refuse flank i'm like okay cool i'll refuse flank i'll go on the opposite flank and you can face the mammoth too and i'll come across slowly while the mammoth goes through you and uh, i think that there'll be some really interesting plays there and, and free folk have some much more important subtleties to the way that they're changing than just like oh my god mammoths yeah i agree yeah uh, and also hopefully bring uh, bring some new ideas to to the commander choices like you're talking about torment and stuff like that Right now we have the wolf on the um, on the Tully Cavaliers, um, being probably the one unit that he expects to end up up the table this turn. Uh, yep. The only thing that he's kind of expecting to do anything significant, so why not give them a bit of a risk? They've also got a vulnerable token on now, and they've got a good armor save, so why not uh, give them that extra punch? Uh, putting them on berserkers is a bit feels near here nor there really. Um, now one. 
criticism I have of Tobo Mott here is that he's got quite an aggressive three units in the Brand Zerkers, obviously, and the Tully Cavaliers, all aiming at the central area, and to some extent the uh, the Cutthroats. But, and this is one criticism of Cutthroats, Cutthroats are very aggressive. But Cutthroats die. Oh my god, mm -hmm. do Cutthroats die to Free Folk. If they don't get the charge off, they just die. Like they're not much different to the the units that are aimed at killing them. Um and and that significant difference there is is a real killer for the the cutthroats. If they get caught out, that's it, usually. And um, it matters. Whereas, you know, yeah. if raiders or trappers get caught out, it doesn't matter so much to the free folk plan. No. Is that another bog devil ambush? Uh, or is I that think, chronic um, traps? Uh, yeah, I think it's um, one or the other. Uh, <laughs> one or the other. Brilliant. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I brought the card up, but you know, clearly not. And we see, um, and we see the um, the what, what? I remind me, remind me. Come on, what's uh, what's the one where you move bog devil ambush is D three D three plus two hits. No, so no, that's no. yeah. What's, uh, what's the uh, one that allow the free folk one that allows you to move? Uh, Swift Advance. Oh no, regroup and reform. Regroup, yeah. We see regroup and reform bring uh, bring Harma back up to uh, back up to full ranks. Um, but then he yeah. she takes exactly the same number of losses back. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. there must have been bog, bog devil ambush there. Yeah, I think that's our second bog devil. Yeah. Or is it a third? <laughs> -na 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 -na. Sansa. I did actually become more involved in the game as it went on, so you know, ho hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully, both my memory and also um, me uh, showing cards as they're played uh, will will slightly improve. I hope you but, know that uh, since we've started recording this, uh, started streaming this game, we've gone down to six viewers. You've halved the grand total with your terrible recording. There you go. Threat there unseen. Go. There we go. So it's a threat unseen, actually. We saw a threat unseen onto the uh, trappers over on the right, I think, and then we saw another Bog Devil ambush onto Harmer's trappers, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've seen a lot of Howling cards come out early, um, and, and rightly so. Like we, You just, just throw them down. If you've got them, throw them down, make a use of them, draw new cards. Uh, it's much better to cycle that deck than it is to hold it. Yeah. Nice to see you over here, Game Weasel. Still just shaping up into like what's going on. Mm -hmm. um but at this point if, at this point in any game you're looking to uh decide what your game plan is and whether or not it's going to plan but you're looking to just pick holes and create some openings for later on and um tobo's doing that through um chipping away at the trappers making them much more into a region where he can just one shot the unit uh, get them off the board start to even up the activations or even take control of them thanks to the dogs um whereas on the opposite side um what bazoo is basically trying to do is he's starting to build up a set of tokens across the board mance being one of his key key victory conditions there and also knowing that like he needs to be able to blunt the both the offensive and defensive strength of those massive power plays of the tully cavaliers and the brand berserkers so like having tokens on them is more important than chipping away and doing a wound here or there the wound here or there won't do a lot to their damage output won't eat the berserkers actually increase it whereas putting big tokens down on these things can massively change the game so yeah interesting set of what they're trying to achieve in the first couple of turns and um and, and how that's factional based and also kind of opponent faction based too what I like about the way Bazu plays Free Folk, having seen him in uh, other rounds and some other things he's done, um, he plays in a way where he will gambit something quite early. Um, mm. He He's willing to throw away a game piece if he believes he can leverage the advantage. And this is actually a very good and very important thing that Free Folk players do a lot. I like to do it a lot mm -hmm. with Trappers. Um, he does it typically with Raiders, but again, it doesn't really matter what you're doing it with. The fact of the matter is he's doing it. Um, and this is where good free folk players really get a lot out of it. Because they can just be like, right, and, come and kill this. And, and that's exactly yeah. what we see here. Yeah. He moves forward with these trappers. He brings them into 12-inch range of the um, Tully Cavaliers, knowing that they will be 2-plus charged in counter. He uses his traps, and he just says, okay, come and kill me. Let's see what happens. 
um and uh, and that's and that's what tobo takes in mm -hmm. like in almost bait in response um and he knows that that will leave him in the uh, corpse pile because of his positioning and all these kind of stuff and leave him with counter opportunities so in income uh, income the tully cavaliers with a successful charge we see there um, mm -hmm. Having taken uh, just uh, just the one wound from the traps. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, there's a weakened token here. There's no mance on this unit, of course, at the moment. Um, this might not kill the trappers. I think it's going to kill the trappers. I mean, we have panic and we have a corpse pile, so it, you know it's a nine test. It doesn't need to be. Uh, it doesn't need to be a lot before before that panic is going to push through another three wounds. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, you're doing lance with even a, a lance with weak and hitting on threes. You're probably realistically going to be getting at least five six hits. Um, and if you're getting five or six hits, then that's probably one trapper might save. Yeah, this is a dead unit. As far it's as I'm dead, concerned, it's, it's, it's an almost confirmed, you know, it's an almost confirmed dead unit thanks to the build up of the uh, of of the Kranig traps. You yeah. know that they're what uh, have put this into such a firm, strong opportunity for Tobo, in his opinion, um, that he will get that kill and then move on, um, move on to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He won't even be fixed into combat. No. He's got a hundred percent as well, which is uh, important because. It He's... means that if he doesn't kill the unit, there is no counter opportunity because um, the trappers have already activated. Mm -hmm. So that leaves them um, unable to activate again and shift their position. Seven hits from the initial charge. Eight hits with the reroll. Nine if you count the... Well, so it's eight hits with a crit blow. So that's currently nine yeah. hits. The weakened gets used. And we see uh, marginally better. We see six hits in total, five with a crit blow. Um, so six hits in total, that, to be honest, is six dead trappers. Any failed panic will probably do it. If you see five or six die here, you know. He gives himself a fighting opportunity with that weakened. But actually, I think I would have liked to let him just have him say, just, okay, the unit's gone. You know, like, I'll keep the weakened. It's worth more to me. Mm -hmm. Um I can see value in that. Um, I personally would probably have used the weaken token there for no reason other than I think it's probably I can probably get out again, and the risk that he fails the test, the risk that he fails mm. to kill me, what you, what is you greater. Could, what, you, what you shoot, what you shoot to gain, what 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 you could gain is yeah. is, is good, and what you lose is not not, not a lot. No, you you'll probably mance letters again at some point. Um, we see we see the unit get wiped out, and we see yep. the Tully Cavaliers retreat. Um, Pretty much it, back to where they started. Yeah, uh, well, not quite. Uh, they did come from significantly behind the Bram Berserkers uh, when mm -hmm. the when the when the when the view moves over. We see <laughs> that they are like a good five inches further forward than they used to be, and um, and you know. We ask ourselves, in Bazu's case, was that uh, that was that sacrifice worthwhile, and uh, what can he gain back from it? Mm -hmm. I, without measuring exact distances, there is a very good chance now that the Tormund unit that we see on the uh, right, which is on the left flank of Bazu's forces here, um, near the white hand we can see on screen, um, that is actually not a terrible charge for the cave dwellers. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, I, I'm as Tobo. That would be what I was looking at to s probably thinking that is what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to come there so he could get this charge off with the cave dollars. Is what I would have thought. Yeah, a few things annoy free folk opponents more than nailing your panic check and not actually getting picked up. That is very true. Um, if you uh, if you pass a panic test as a free folk player, it's considered uh, like an awful thing. And I actually play. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely play. This is not a word of a lie. I play with a mindset that I fail every panic test with four wounds. And because that is just like a given. And anything better than that is obviously oh, hey. <laughs> not even not necessarily a win, but a surprise. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always a surprise. 
which always always means you enjoy your games as free folk though because when you don't fail with a minus when you, when you fail and only lose two wounds you're like hey <laughs> that's not too bad <laughs> um so we see steer coming forward is he going to He's just see, um, move. So I think what uh, what we see Bazu doing here is uh, we we see him using a relatively classic denial, which is um, mm -hmm. he's placing his fifty cent mark across the uh, Tully Cavaliers, meaning that the Bram Berserkers can't charge him. No. Um, you know, it's an acceptance that the Bram Berserkers are just going to walk over and collect the token instead. Mm -hmm. um, but it does deny uh, the huge damage that that unit can do, um, and yet uh, he, he's done it it has an interesting advantage to him because he can still charge the Tully Cavaliers, but yep. Tully Cavaliers have activated and the unit that um the unit that Tobo has left to play can't can't charge him in return. Yeah. So he sees that it, there's no real gain for him to fight more fights here and that what he should do is use his movement as a denial purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is very, very common um at high level play and is very important skill for people to learn to play at the top level for this game where the value of wolves come in where mm -hmm. the uh, value of these skin changer bears come in actually more than the damage they do is to like create these denial zones where you can't charge because you can't make 50 percent contact mm -hmm. and it's the thing that will probably make dragons incredibly infuriating to play against yes um now, interestingly, uh, after you mention all of that, um, it's well, this this area denial thing we've talked about a couple of times on stream before. There's a couple of things uh, with this that um, that I do wonder if it's going to change. Mm. I do I wonder. Think, I think that they had. So basically, they decided that units can't just clip anymore was what they were trying to get rid of. And they created this, you must meet 50% rule. I don't think that they thought through the full set of ramifications mm -hmm. in terms of how easy it is for certain units to deny each other. What we see here, for example, is... Uh, oh, <laughs> yep. You switched to this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> take a look at what's going on over there. Um, <laughs> what we see here is we see the bear also doing something similar, right? So this mm -hmm. is the even more annoying version of it, which, where he's using his own units to deny charges against his own unit. We see this dragon, uh, sorry, this bear, it comes forward, and then it pivots such that for you to be in 50% contact with it, you would have to hit Sire. But you are in its front arc, so there are basically angles that I can be at which means that you have to charge me in the front, but you can't charge me in the front because you don't have to do 50% option on my front. Hmm. You can charge me in my flank, but you're not in my flank arc because of careful positioning. And this is very, very easy with small solo trays, much more difficult with large infantry trays because you know, I would show so much more 50% of my base would mm -hmm. stick out. But with the small solos sitting between infantry sized trays, it's very, very common for, the, for people to do these things. Um, and to either use the bear as a way to deny any contact into the main unit or to use the main unit to deny any contact into the bear. And if you start to chain them all off each other, then none of these units are basically chargeable because they're all blocking charges against each other. Yes, of course, all you have to do is maneuver into my flank and, and there's a whole hole there. It's very easy to do something. But as soon as you maneuver into my flank, I'm just going to reposition in such a way that you're not able to charge me again. So you cavalry swift advance and all these things become incredibly important and that is the real reason why we see starks and free folk dominating at top level play because they have that choice and other people don't have the option and they just get abused by the rule i think it will change yeah i think it needs to change it well the real question is i think it needs to change um i don't know what into because there were issues with the old ruling and i don't know if they will or when they will because they've been very slow to change things in the past you know it took them years to get to 1.5 mm -hmm. maybe in january one year after 1.5.1 we will see uh 2.0 or a 1.8 or whatever it's called i personally believe that you should be able to rotate your opponent on charge 
mm. as in like they're addressing the charge and rotating slightly so the bear in this case you're in the front the bear would have to rotate slightly because you can see to meet you, to meet you because yeah because, because you can see the flank fully you know and, yeah um you just got this weird you know it's interesting it's difficult you know i also prefer yeah. i actually really like a rule as well that you should always be able to make a worse charge um so you it comes with some issues but if you can see uh the flank the flank and the front you should be able to, if you're in the flank you should be able to charge the front you should be able to choose to yeah, yeah. okay if, if flank make... is like 50 percent blocked yeah but they're basically it can happen either way basically they force you to be in their flank but you can't fit 50 percent in their flank is actually the most common thing which which tactically seems ludicrous they basically show you your flank they show you their flank but they don't give you enough of it to charge yeah. and that denies all contact and is a very very sneaky but very common uh, maneuver that we see these days so we see the cave dweller savages uh, with Tormund there just marching well maneuvering it's not really that important he, they're just going point blank range and going there you go what are you can do now the interesting thing here is all of these units in the front here are completely unchargeable and it is completely down to the Tully Cavaliers moving out of the way right now. Yeah. This is, although it doesn't look like it, this is Spaghetti Junction for Stark players right now. And, it, and it's from the way that they're all just like slightly, uh, slightly tilted in towards each other at different uh, forward and backwards and sideways positioning and it uh, all just gets... It's interesting. It's in you could, in some ways, you could argue that it's a TTS problem because in real life, so many of, or more to the point, like it only works re in reality on TTS because it's the only one where you can be so sure of the positioning and be so sure of what 50% is, is that you can pull these things off. Whereas in real games, actually, most of these units will get knocked mm -hmm. and like this will fall apart as units get knocked. But that's a problem with the game in physical terms in that this is available doable and very much exploitable in the rules just in reality it gets lost by imperfections of um, of physical physical models mm -hmm. uh, but if a player is very adamant about it positions their unit very carefully and selectively and speaks about it with their opponent they can still do this in person you know this is still doable but we didn't see it happen very regularly until tts came along because all the lines and extra arcs that we get to see and use we can just be like look here's conclusive proof for this reason you can't charge me and the opponent has no discussion whereas mm -hmm. i think in physical physical games players get will get very annoyed about it and argue about it for a long time which is also a problem in itself yeah So we see the card that matters the most, Steer's Vengeance. This is Steer's just best card, you know, and this is why that Trapper play is so important. The Trapper goes down and it's a dead unit, and that means that this Cave Dweller unit can reactivate, and it gets plus one dice and plus, uh, sorry, plus one to hit and plus two dice because it's within short range of Steer. This Cave Dweller unit, although it's not attacking a rank down unit, is actually really scary now because... It's Tormund. They're vulnerable already anyway, so it's a bit academic. But it has Sundering. They are hitting on threes with a reroll, obviously, and they're rolling nine dice. And don't forget, there's a wolf there. Yeah. So not the not. I mean, this is statistically average roll, pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what you'd expect. Uh, about eight hits from a three plus uh, on nine dice. Um, two thirds followed by two thirds of that. Um, and we see how many fails is this going to be? Sundering gets them on a uh, three. Or it should be a three. Is it four? A three plus four. base only. Becomes four plus. Uh, which is obviously uh, a good save to start off with. We're going to see the vulnerable used. We are indeed. <laughs> Unfortunately, no ones. <laughs> Not a yeah. single one was rolled. <laughs> no wolf. Uh, but uh, six wounds. We should be seeing. That's still the full front rank. Yeah, so I actually think that they didn't apply Sundering. Um, are you sure that they have Sundering? Because they only apply four wounds. Uh, they have Sundering from Tormund on the charge. They have Sundering. Um, yeah. No, they, so they, they do take just... off the rest. Oh, okay. 
Uh, there should have been six wounds, and um, there should be one more. Had already taken yeah. one from the trappers, so I did notice it at the time. I think that they miscount the the number of wounds exactly, um, and think it might end up making an effect later on. Hmm. But we will see. That is unfortunately yeah. uh, unfortunately the case of all player games, and as we say, yeah, even yeah. watching it at the time, Carlo wouldn't have stepped in. Um, yeah, not at all. Uh, there um, there are some times so... where we will, but. Only so, uh, so yeah, rules. so we see, we see, we see the trade-off there. We see why Bazu was willing to be aggressive with those trappers, um, and he's really got himself into a situation against those Tully Cavaliers, where they're they need to worry now about these cave dweller savages. They've lost that first rank now. Yeah, he's used his charge effect, he's used torment and his ability and stuff like that. But they're now into a range where the uh, cave dweller savages can start picking up uh, lots of extra bonuses. And um, and we start to see the shots come in at the end of the round from the uh, from the various walls. Mm -hmm. One um, only one poor stormcrow. Mira is is dead. Yeah, only one from Mira. They of course bring a four up save, mm -hmm. so you know they are generally um, a relatively resilient unit outside of the panic, and there is no panic test off of these hits. Yeah. The other thing, don't forget, is is you can um, when you take a ncu onto the tactics board you can swap the zone with taking a shot against a unit in one of these and one of the things that makes the center objective so important in this even though you're fighting over it is the fact that nobody can shoot the center it only comes from the side do we know if he turned off mance yeah from the center objective uh, i believe actually he chooses to turn off um lady val i think is actually his choice uh, which is uh, which Ooh. is interesting. That's three saves on that raider unit. <laughs> yeah, big boys. Raiders uh, coming up clutch uh, with just the one fail. Interesting on the turn off on Lady Val. I can understand I believe, why. Uh, we can double. We we will see what happens um, during this activation, but I think it's Lady Val who uh, who he's gone for the swap. Very interesting. We see distraction tactics thrown away, and also there's too many. Two absolute classic free foe cards that are... They're just not good. Mm -hmm. They're just not good mm -hmm. cards. Yes, you can, they work, and uh, public service announcement. Yes, anything can work in this game, but there's a difference between it working and it being good. Um, I think it comes up later, So, uh, and I've seen it happen on other streams, and people have been talking about it, and I've been meaning to talk to you about it. So, Mickey, Surrounded and Exposed. Yes. Is... Uh, the trigger is is just um, start bear, of the turn, right? Friendly yeah, turn. Yeah, bear in mind, um, it's not just start of any turn. And by the way, I do think this is one of the strongest cards in the free throw deck. But go on. Okay, so the question is, based on the fact that you think it's one of the strongest cards in the free throw deck, I'm going to assume that you believe that the second part is, in, uh, is not tied to the first. The question is, is, if I control horses, can I play this on you and give you a token without you having to be within short range of two units? That is uh, what I've seen being discussed, and a lot of people saying, "No, you can't possibly do that." It says also. Um, thoughts? Honestly, you can play it. You can one hundred percent play the card because nothing stops you from playing it. Yeah. Yeah, and that is because the reason there isn't a stipulation that requires you to be within short range to play them. Correct, and that is purely the reason I think that it does still give the token. Yeah. Why have a card that you can play? that literally does nothing if you play it like like specifically the text it, there is actually more than one free folk card that says that but distraction tactics is when an enemy makes a combat unit it's not they suffer minus one if they're in combat with two and they suffer minus yeah. one if they it says they suffer with minus one with from every combat after the first so yes you can play it and it does nothing but it's very specific that yes it only counts like it doesn't matter you can play it in any situation where you get attacked it just will give you a minus zero and it's the thing it will give you a minus zero not like that matters yeah. but it is an effect um so what we what we see just to catch us up in yeah, it sorry. Uh, bazu bazu's going first uh we see mance come down um and the... varis blocks it with a three yeah. plus he blocks the zone effect um mance is not switched off we see him go onto the tully cavaliers place down a vulnerable token and um and in response we see howland come and take the money bags howland himself i believe goes on to the 
um, cave dwellers onto as well. the cave dwellers, savages. And uh, that's going to heal and remove uh, the token from the Tully Cavaliers. They do, again, have the wolf attached to them at the start of the round. This uh, again removes, very a, committed this removes a Cave Dweller buff as well. Indirectly, yeah. this is actually a much bigger defensive play than just a heal and a remove a token. Oh, sorry. I've completely um, lied this entire time. Lady Val isn't even here. Craster, oh, he of course, of... is, the third, <laughs> is the third choice. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think it I think it might be a regret that he turned off, or or it's actually possible that I don't know who he turned off because they forgot to turn anybody off. That's fair enough. If they forgot to turn someone off, then that's that's fair enough. Not much we can do about that. Is this a replace zone effect we see coming um, up? Uh, making someone making a shot with the walls. Yes. So we yeah exactly. I'm pretty sure we saw uh, Sansa replace it with that shot. Mm -hmm. Which has done two more wounds to the, uh, as you look at the camera, the back left unit of raiders. Mm -hmm. And then we see, um, I'm pretty sure we see a two wounds onto the cave dwellers and a draw a card replacement from um, Craster. from Craster here. Yeah. So we see them burn through their NCUs as is very common at the start of the turn. I think that despite the fact that Bazoo um, has Bazoo's in chat. Turn, Baz is in chat. Of... Ygritte was switched off. Okay, Good man, Bazzy. Go. Cool. Thanks for turning um, up. Because of... Uh, I would say that... Because of Varys, despite uh, Bazu having first turn there, um, Tobu Mott very much got the better of that NCU exchange, having pushed his... Um, having pushed his Tully Cavaliers back into having the two ranks, making them much less attractive target for the Cave Dweller Savages. But we saw him burn significant Varus um, tokens there to keep that so. I believe he played and passed two two tokens. So This is massive. This like is I a said, swift advance onto the House Bolton Cutthroats. Going into the, uh, the Wolf Trapper unit, I'd have thought. Yeah, I at the very at the, at the time I was actually very um, I'm unhappy about this charge. Uh, I'll tell you why. Um, it's actually it turns out fine. So he gets trapped. Uh, so he disorders on a on a on a one or a two. He moves up this space here. Uh, I think I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, here we go. So Tobo has moved so that he ignores and misses the bog, um, but. If he is true, he's trying to charge the raiders. They're going to discuss it for a little while. He doesn't pivot his tray, right? And if he pivots his tray to properly show the direction that he's trying to charge, he will hit the bog. Or and the trappers first. The bog, he's going to hit the trappers first. Yeah. But he doesn't do either and claims that he's charging the raiders. And we let him off with one dice. Luckily, because of the trappers, he disorders on a two. So I was very pleased that he did disorder because so he gets the one and he re-rolls thanks to um, Swift Advance and he still hits a two, yeah, uh, which is very important. But he should have been rolling two dice and receiving a minus one movement because you must just make your opponent pivot. Like it's as simple as that. It Play takes through the steps. On TPS to to tell them to pivot, and you would have seen that every angle would have hit trappers first or you have to turn quite far and you're going through the bog yep there was not a position that he could avoid the bog in that and um and you know i am always against people short cutting the charge people do it all the time you know if you don't pivot and then you roll the dice as far as i'm concerned you're going straight forward i ain't letting you pivot afterwards the rules say because, that because it very much changes the angle at which you will come in and it very much can affect your final positioning. Mm -hmm. You need to predict these things when you choose your position. You don't get to choose it after you've seen how far you're going. So we saw four hits from the cutthroats and four wounds. Um, yeah. No saves were made, but this leaves the Raiders on one health. Regardless of what this panic yeah. test is, they're going to be a one or more health on the check. Very important, that disorder, that they... Um, they almost definitely would have been within one shot range with the vicious and the vulnerable token. You know, all he needed to do was score more hits. A couple more but, hits. Uh, but it's not enough. And, Final strike uh, as well. 
and we see final strike in revenge yeah so that's uh in response that's four hits coming back against the cutthroats uh this is very easily going to be you know this is easily going to be two or three maybe even four wounds yep four wounds coming out back onto the cutthroats this is what we we're saying before about cutthroats being actually like the moment they get caught out and things like steers final strike card are very good at just catching them out and killing them off uh, and we see the failed panic there we've got to roll the d3 uh, for two wounds this in my opinion is barely a good play for Tobo. If if it's non-disordered and it's a 100% blowout and you don't think that final strike's coming, then obviously it looks fine. It looks it looks from the uh from the surface like it's a great set of situation, but he disorders meaning that it's not a one-shot kill and he hasn't well, either he's accepted final strike is coming or um, generally kind of is okay with it happening, but it's not gone as well as you might have thought that you were going to get. You thought you were going to take control of that objective, wipe out a unit, gain activation control, all these things, and instead uh, you've traded like half a unit for half a unit, and that's half a five-point unit for a half a three-point unit. And your five-point unit is worth something. His yeah, isn't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we see the attack Not here from that, the cave that dwellers. Relatively overextended, um, overextended into that position. And, um, we just saw seven dice come out from cave dwellers with no bonuses. Yeah. With Howland's minus one, that's seven misses. They hit on fives. Yeah. This is the one turn that off was, with uh, cave dwellers. That was a big, a big fluff. Um, and in response, what we're seeing is we're seeing Summer come in. Um, he's actually going to play, um, I forget the Dev name, Impact. Devastating Impact. Plays Devastating Impact, getting the auto six charge through the bog. Uh, and so he two wounds gonna straight away. In. Yeah, he's going to come in, do two wounds, gain two attacks. Um, so, you know, he has got a follow up here and he gets the kill that he was looking for. But uh, those cutthroats have paid for it heavily. He's obviously done this because he's been trapped on the first charge. So yep. he knows that the trappers is used. The order is gone. The wolf can be more aggressive now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he does well to kill the unit off before it can activate, can attack back, do anything to the um, cutthroats. And I might have liked to see the raiders. It's easy to say in, in hindsight, having seen that uh, Summer's going to come in and blast this unit and kill them off. Easy to say, oh, I would have liked to see them activate. But in that situation... Um, you know, getting that activation out there might have been the best thing that um, that we could have done. In hindsight, those savages doing nothing made it really, really painful. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see him go forward to summer here. Yeah. Now, he can't control this token. Tobomok cannot control this token with the pivot. No. It's not possible. Yeah. Um, the... That's why he would have wanted to get the 100% blowout because the uh, on the on the charge, mm -hmm. because the overrun, the surge forth, would have allowed him to take the token, but pivoting doesn't allow him to do so. He's not set up in a position to have it, so he's denied it himself from it. So killing the raiders in total hasn't actually netted him any VPs. Yep. It has denied one to uh, Bazu, but. Uh, interestingly, you know, it's been quite a big difference. If we think about it, though, um, if he'd done more damage with that hit, if he had not disordered and rerolled his attacks, then Final Strike would have really, really doubled up and hurt a lot on uh, on the yeah, return. Yeah, definitely. That's why I quite like Final Strike with uh, trappers in your army, because trappers don't save anything. Have a unit of Zerkers run into a unit of Trappers and the Zerkers nearly die. And then you go, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah. um, so you see the pivot there coming from Tobo. Uh, and we see uh, we see Steyr charge into uh, into the Berserkers here. Yep. Um, I really yeah. don't know about this as an attack. Like, there are, there's Vicious, there's Quartz Piles. This is Tobo's favour right now. Um, sorry, uh, Bazu's favour. But the problem is, if you don't kill them, they are probably very easily going to kill you back. Now, 
the big difference here, of course, is that there's Steer in that unit. And Steer has cut them down. Not cut them down. Go down fighting. Go down fighting. I had... <laughs> that is very astute of you. <laughs> yeah. Steer has go down fighting, and I had totally forgotten about it. Later on, it's going to come in really big. Um, I had no idea what was going on. People were just dying on both sides, and I could not, for the world life of me, work out why until I checked and remembered that Steer had go down fighting. Not only that, but he also has um, plus two to morale. I forget what it's. Yeah, it is plus is. stalwart. Stalwart, yeah. There we go. Uh, so that is a powerful unit, and more powerful than you might think it is on the surface. Um, we see we see just a rank go down we see the bear following up um the weakened is important and i think i think the weakened has a lot of play here once the unit is already engaged forcing the rerolls on those charge can can really make the difference mm -hmm. um but uh yes it is what makes what makes brand berserkers so so strong is that like there are there's almost nothing in the game that wants to charge them and there's nothing in the game that wants to be charged by them, but they're too fast to ignore. So they can't be abused like a slow movement unit. They can't be one shot. They can't be alpha striked, and yet they can alpha strike you. So it's a tough choice whenever you play Brand Berserkers. Are you just going to go in there and tie them up with somebody? Are you going to tie them up with somebody cheap? Are you going to go in there with a unit that stands a chance? Are you going to make them sweat, or are you going to just except the, the loss you know what i mean like it's never a nice unit to play against not gonna lie as a free folk player i often go right i want that thing to charge this unit here because then i'm gonna have to swarm them and kill them off and that's the only way to do it mm -hmm. uh Groose turning up there bran is the best two-point attachment before you add in free summer you know what i'd argue that he probably is yep bearing in yep. mind let's just quickly remember that the mountain attachment for three kind of gives semi devastating impacty kind of thingy. Then he's just D three automatic wounds. Oh no, that's commander version. That's the commander. Um, What's the the the, the, uh, the three point attachment gives sundering and you have to take a panic check and if you fail, you then charge. you count as charging charging a on a six and you don't get to chew. Like, oh, I don't. Yeah. It's Devin's, but it's Devin uh, packed no, on not, a morale test. Not, He's not even. He's not comparative. Comparative, like I'd take Bran for two points without Summer over the Mountain for three every day of the week. Like skin changing on his own unit, so powerful. Hodor, Hodor, hold the door is absolutely game changing. Ah, oh, he's so good. Summer with skin changing is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not a fair comparison. What is interesting here is despite the fact that he hasn't used skin changing yet and that he's already used summer, he didn't use it on summer, he was very sure that he was going to do the two, the one wound that he needed with that devastating impact, he's just chosen to attack and kill the bear. I was very skeptical of this as a choice at the time. Maybe he's very scared of go down fighting. Um, he does, Bazu does of course control swords right now. Mm -hmm. um, but he's just put a huge attack into killing off a bear and bazu rightly so just looks at it and says yeah i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna weaken that it's a waste of time yep it's an absolute classic error killing bears you kill bears with resources that you can use uh talk to stannis a lot about his free folk matchups um howland's cards are brilliant at killing bears because there you go d3 plus two hits on a bear done potentially at a minus one to your armor saves as well done easy that's how you kill a bear you do not want to be wasting an attack on a bear, especially an attack no. that's rolling nine dice hitting on threes. This, um, this right here, this, this is the, this is the play of the game for me. This is huge. I really, really like it. So he's played, uh, he's playing a swift advance on these trappers, and he's using it to get into the flank of these cutthroats. Um, he's gonna shift over, and then he's gonna take a shot into the flank. Wait, this, is pushing him, shift, yeah. this is pushing him into six up saves and minus one um, on the test. Mm -hmm. And he has a real chance to blow this unit up right now and destroy it. Have they checked um, to see if that's in range? In the front. Uh, I believe so. Um, because... 
I hope they do. He's in short range of them, and they are facing the same way, so he will... It's not parallel, though. They're not parallel. Not, they're not exactly parallel. Uh, I don't know if they have checked, but it, it looks... It's an interesting it thing. Him to me. But um, he does two wounds, and um, I'm check. pretty sure it's followed up by a panic fail from the flank. And um... I would like to see if that was checked. Just a curious one. Uh, not saying that they didn't check it, or not saying that it's not in range, but you'd be surprised how short short range is. Uh, yeah, three wounds. So we see three. It's not a kill, but actually, what's what I really like about it is, as it currently stands, traps. It can't. They can't kill both, but they can kill either unit. Mm -hmm. If either unit tries to do something next turn, it will just die, and that is enough to have that unit of trappers controlling that whole region and i i i thought that was a brilliant play i i really do think that it was a brilliant choice um and it turned that whole side from what was looking bad into what is now points that bazu can pick up and there are no points there for tabo mark right Mm -hmm. He can't move on to the objective. He gets trapped and he dies. Um, and that's even without the trappers having to activate. The trappers can force activations because they could shoot and kill either unit. Most likely they can kill the cutthroats very easily and then keep their traps for the dog. It just applies pressure. Mm -hmm. The traps are huge here. I, and I he got himself into a range where both units are scared of them. I personally probably would have played it slightly differently and just played it and actually pushed forward down the middle. Um, you put yourself in range of Mira's units, but if Mira's coming off the objective to come and kill you, then I think that's fine. Um, it's true. You, I did wonder whether or not he could push around that But I don't know if he had the distance. But, yeah. but I like that he's within short range of both units and can pressure to attack either and trap the other. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's just showing that when dogs aren't babysitting objectives, when dogs aren't babysitting objectives... They are fine, almost at zero points, because of the one-point cost. They are a liability. That in game modes where you can't do those things with them, they are probably balanced, and it's fine. But the thing is, is they just never considered. They, they have not balanced them for the value that they have when they're not fighting. Value when they're not engaged in the game is too high for them to just sit in a corner. Just being an activation is too valuable. And them sitting on an objective makes them just game-breakingly unbeatable in certain game modes. Yeah. Which is why I think that people have to be incredibly careful about what game modes they include in tournaments. Mm -hmm. Something we've talked about a lot recently over the last couple of weeks. We see uh, another final strike coming out. And this is on the, uh, the Cave Dwellers. Um, there's a wolf on this unit. <laughs> there is, yeah. So we see quite a decent number of hits there, five, and they take a wound. Take three wounds, apparently. One, they should take two wounds. I thought you just gave them three. Oh, well. That sounds about right. Does Final Strike uh, cause any uh, sundering effect or anything like that? No. No, I think they get minus... Ah, oh, they might have minus one uh, to save if they're within short range of steer, which they will be. Yeah. Okay. Of, yeah. So uh, effectively yeah. sundering if they're in short range. Fail, the ones a fail and the ones an extra wound. Yeah. From that. Which is full rank, which is, as we know, prime cave dollar savage time. So, um, we see D5. Ah, he's... They started to have a lot of trouble with this tray. Um, as, as sometimes happens, uh, basically a couple of uh, cave dwellers have ended up like doubled up onto certain uh, certain areas. They've tried to duplicate the tray and it still doesn't work. Um, so they started using a dice to refer to how many wounds the wounds the unit has left. As you can see, as he removes wounds, they don't come from the right place. Mm -hmm. uh, what's actually happened, if, you're, if you want to know and you've had this issue, um, if you look very, very closely, as I'm showing you here, there's actually two cave dwellers sat on top of each other, which is why they're not being removed properly. Um, but... There you go. So the unit has five wounds, mm -hmm. is what we're, uh, the dice is actually referring to. Yeah. 
Although, possibly at six. <laughs> it's now six. Yep. The uh, advantages and limitations of TTS all on show at the same time. Yeah. Um, there are ways, of course, there are ways to uh, to reset the trays and things like that. Uh, but I won't bore you with those uh, very boring details right now. Cause... This isn't a learn to play TTS. No. Um, okay. So. Um, we see the radar unit. Is this going to just... Is this a... Uh, yeah, okay, so a, pulling it off the objective. Yeah. No, I believe... Uh, yeah, Swift I Advance believe, again. Oh, yeah. Uh, I That's right. Yeah, sorry, I just remembered. Um, so, yeah, so he's moving into a position where he's not on the bog, but he is in the flank. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's looking to make uh, a charge into the flank of this Tully Cav unit. Um, it's an aggressive play. It's a bold, it's a broad strategy, Cotton. Mm -hmm. um, how, do we, how, do you, how do we feel about this one? Uh, we've got Gang Up. Um, we're rolling, remind me, six dice on Raiders. Yeah, six dice hitting on threes now with the re-roll. I assume it's going to be a nice not disorderly charge. Uh, there could be, is there any card in? If there's a card in hand, we could see, no, no cards in hand, so no crit blow or anything. So just six dice. Six hits is not unlikely. So I don't like, don't dislike this. Um, as well, you've effectively got Sundering. So you see five hits. Um, we got I don't, four plus yeah. from the flank. We've got the wolf, mm -hmm. uh, you know. I don't dislike this play. Um, so, yeah, we see three wounds, four wounds with uh, the wolf. And we bring ourselves into a flank-based um, morale, flank morale check. I think it was always going to come down to a flank-based morale check, if I was to be personally honest. Um, with obviously mm -hmm. the, the corpse piling out, it's a minus two. A minus two's not awful. You know what I mean? Like... On a, yeah. on a on a Tully Cavalier unit, that it's is something I'd be willing to take. If he gets this kill right here, it's a big game changer. If not, he's gonna get rear charged by some not full really health. Extra. Yeah, that's the save. And we see a morale pass. <laughs> I, I it that's only that a unit a little bit stranded. That's a pass on seven, right? That's a pass on seven from the Tully Cavaliers. So, because they're five base, right? And mm -hmm. minus two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a 58% chance to pass and he passes it um... is it a risk you'd take the thing is it's a 40 so it's a 47% chance that he would have failed the test but it's actually more than just that because it's you've also got to have done the wounds you know he only yeah. needed to fail there um... there was the outside chance that he just wiped him out with 6 wounds yeah because of the wolf, of the wolf obviously impossible. yeah um, I, mean, I don't yeah, dislike I don't, it. I don't completely dislike I don't, I, it. I think it's not. I think it's not worth the investment of the swift advance itself. If the charge were just there and present and able, then sure, go for it. But for the use of the swift advance on top, it feels yeah. like it's a big commitment. Um, yeah, I think that would be my that would be my thing. If 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 there was a vulnerable on there as well, I'd love to have seen a vulnerable on there not used earlier. Um, that would have been amazing, or not healed earlier. Uh, so we see uh, not disorderly charge. Strange enough, Rickon and Osha with her storm with their storm crows, charging in um, into the rear of this radio unit. And I'm going to be super honest here. I expect this radio unit to evaporate. You know, I, that's what I expect. And this is why I don't like this risk. Because even if it does pay off. I'd still kind of expect this to happen. It just wouldn't necessarily be in the rear. So we see... Uh, mm. Then they hit on threes. So if, they, or if, fours. if they kill the unit, then surely they will, they'll be able to surge forth so that they're no longer within line of sight of the Stormcrows. So five dead. This oh. is a, it's a minus three panic check. It's almost certainly going to fail. And if this doesn't kill him, Shaggy will. No... Oh, yeah, that's still a uh, fail. Three wounds. And this is almost not worth bothering to roll that Shaggy's going to come in there and kill that unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like this play, because Shaggy is actually a genuine threat to the Cave Dwellers. Uh, cave Dwellers basically have no armor. Um, and, uh, and Shaggy can just very easily come in on the flank and do a minus three plus Corpse Fire, minus four panic check on Cave Dwellers. That's an eight. That's not what you want to be seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And so you're going to be probably taking two wounds plus whatever plus more from the uh, panic. So yeah. Uh, but but as we know, Shaggy's almost certainly going to activate and come into the rear of these raiders here. And you can move six forward to get them in line of sight. It's not even worth checking whether or not he uh, he's going to be in or not. The question is if it's disorderly. It is. Wow. It is actually a disorderly charge. Um, Luckily, those dogs, they hit on two plus. Yeah, that's, and that's they have a, two attacks. Two sixes coming yeah. up. Two sixes. Oh, nearly. Tried. Nah. Dead bloke. Another unit's gone. Free maneuver with the wolf and uh, the free pivot with the Rickon unit will get him control of the objective again, right? Uh, yeah, I believe he already has uh, control okay. of the objective. He, right. I think the pivot actually does, can't really do anything for him. Should be using five inches there. I think he moves him six. He should have actually just moved five um, because of the bog. But it probably makes about all of that zero difference in the long term. Yeah, it's basically control of the objective. So I feel like if he kills... If he kills the Sully Cavaliers there, um, he will move into a position where the Raiders can't be charged by the Storm Crows. They will probably get tied up by Shaggy Dog. But more importantly, he frees up the Cave Dweller Savages, which is why he's really doing it, to um, face the flank of the... Um, place into the flank of the Berserkers, which is what he's actually playing for. But to me, it feels like a really big risk. Like, he does only have roughly, I would say, you know, as we throw it all out there, you're going to have to do not really, really badly on the attack and then force through a panic fail. Mm -hmm. I'd say you're, you're looking at about 33%, 40% chance of it coming off in the way that you want it to happen. Um, and every other situation where it doesn't come off is going to result in this. So it's a big risk, and... You know, big props to Bazoo for taking it on. You know, mm -hmm. he's shown that he's that kind of player who will take these risks rather than just like sticking with the current situation and saying, oh, I lost, there was nothing I could do, Starks are just better. Um, but, uh, you know, like it's definitely, you have to consider that a pretty risky play that hasn't paid off for him. Mm -hmm. I think we move into uh, the, end the end of phase. the round yeah. and we see uh, some pretty Ooh. big numbers being rolled Five for wounds. the amount of damage. And this is where we start to see that, like, units that... This game mode is different to Game of Thrones, and I like it because controlling objectives doesn't come without a price. Mm -hmm. And he's rolled a lot of threes and ones in that rolls, uh, in yeah. those rolls, so he's, he's lost seen, nine we've units seen there. A rank, we've, seen, we've seen a rank get stripped off of both of the Stormcrow mercs, and now they have to be thinking about whether or not they can afford to hold the objective for the rest of the game by themselves. Uh, Bazoo can start thinking about whether or not uh, swapping tactic zones for extra shots brings about the pressure and the results that he wants. You have and, to um, you have to weigh out uh, cost price costs and things like that now, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Bazoo has less units than Tobermot does on the field, but actually the wounds are not that dissimilar. And that's, that's something true. we've got. You've got activations are, are there, but the wounds count is very similar. I would really and that, like and that, to and see. Who has still his best, most important units on the board, yep. whereas he's lost. Um, he's lost a lot of chaff. Mm -hmm. He's five two down though. Let's be let's be honest about this. He's five two down. Currently not controlling many objectives at all. Uh, and we're going into um, we're going into. Uh, Tobo Mott being first player, which should never be underestimated, you know, particularly against free folk who aren't or anybody not running Varus. That means you get run of the tactics board. There's no cancel denials going on there. You get mm -hmm. to play whatever you want and uh, do important stuff. Um, for a moment, I thought we were going to see him activate his, uh, his cutthroats, forgetting maybe, or maybe trying to free up Summer so that she didn't get trapped. Um, but, uh, you know, that unit will die as soon as it activates, which I think would be a terrible, terrible choice. For first activation, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
this is actually a very interesting play that Tobo chooses to make. He takes quite a while in the decision, um, and I understand what his reasoning was, um, but I don't think I would agree with it myself. In this situation, personally, I will always try to use my first turn, a game particularly against somebody without Varys, to have complete control over the zones of the tactics board that I want, um, and to have control of the zones and the change the battlefield in the way I think needs to be most importantly changed. I oh, so we see the wolf activation there's wolf's going on to Rickon's unit interestingly. Uh wolf so this is where I really start to think that the wolf has incredible value because let's not forget every time you roll saves from being shot from the wall they also will It is auto one. wounds. Yeah, it's potentially yeah. auto wounds. Exactly. So he has real threatening effect with that wolf on a on a four plus save unit that it could just blow up in an instant. Rick on, of course, offering up an extra VP himself. That unit dying would be a huge swing, and the wolf makes it a very threatening um, situation. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Okay. I think personally, I would like uh, Tobo to be. I would like him to either take letters, depending on his hand, throw out a token. It's just incredible value. It's a great start. Or I would like him to take swords as much as a blocking um, kind of play as it is an aggressive play. For go down um, fighting, you want to stop it and for other things. I... Go down fighting being incredibly key here. Mm -hmm. Probably using Bran and Berserkers to uh, smack Styrus. Just as make soon as possible. Blunt, blunt Stiers unit with this attack. Um, so yeah. when he attacks back, if he wants to, it doesn't really do much. Um, you know, followers of Bone on one rank are meh. You know what I mean? There's a unit with Vicious, to be honest. I mean, they're a unit anyway. They're on the higher end of attack dice for Free Folk. But they're for a six-point unit, they're exactly what you'd expect to buy for six points in pretty much any other faction. Yeah. Um, you know, they are essentially Sentinels with Sundering swapped out for Vicious and then Horrific Bizarre. Great. Done. Um, but you can understand why Tobo's taking a long time over to this decision. When we look at this board, like you say, Basil only has three units and mm -hmm. he's got... Um, still seven combat units of his own but the wounds are everywhere none of these units is safe they're all in a position that one attack could wipe them out and he has to prioritize right now which ones he wants to keep which ones he wants to be aggressive with which ones he wants to be defensive with and how all of those things are going to play out and um and it's a really difficult choice and and, and the game is decided here you know like this Last turn was big. It was influential. It put him way into the driving seat, but he has to uh, secure it. Is this and a rear charge? Actually, what we actually see is we see Shaggy activate and rear charge into the Cave Dweller Savage. So I don't dislike this play. This is what I said to you. I don't dislike this. This is, in my opinion, this is not a bad play. Um, I don't. They're on six wounds, I believe, the Cave Dweller Savages at the moment. So this yeah. is this is not a a bad play whatsoever. Um, you're not going to kill this unit. Oh, with Dev uh, Impact, you might. Maybe you will. You see what yeah. he has in hand. Gone into Devastating Impact. Of course, might give him uh, four hits. Four hits and Vicious is what he's decided is going to give him a real chance to kill this unit. Um, he only rolls the two dice. Did we actually see Devastating Impact get played? Me, I don't know. You highlighted it. Maybe he... No, he didn't. No, he didn't play it. So, two wounds. So, it drops them down to four wounds remaining. And they've just noticed the dev impact? Yeah, I think. I think two I more think wounds. Two more hits. Okay, two more two, wounds. Two more hits, not two extra attacks, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's four four wounds in total. And the panic test pass. Sixes. So panic test comes up double six. Uh, what is his test actually on? Uh, what um, What's the morale so of So, his uh, morale, morale of cable is four rear... Uh, six, um, Shaggy Vicious, eight, eight, Corpse Pile nine. That is a decision he's made, and you have to think it's better than fifty-fifty. 
Uh, I don't dislike that play. I don't. He's I, been unlucky there. I don't actually dislike that unlucky. play. What I dislike about that play, if anything, is he could have achieved something very similar with the swords attack with the Tully Cavaliers. Quite possibly. It's not going to be rear. It's not going to be vicious. He's not going to get a panic fail. Um, but he, he still does the same, the same effect. Like, same net wounds. And I know you can't okay, just say... But, oh. he but, but the point is, is he's shooting for the kill there, right? He's shooting yeah. for the kill to clean up and get um, the Tully Cavaliers out of combat so that they can charge later in the round. Stuff like that. But if you're shooting, like, in my opinion, if you're shooting the kill... It's what I always say about people playing against Free Folk. If you're preying on a unit of Free Folk failing a panic test to get a kill, then that'll be the time that they don't. <laughs> Yeah. Because you, you, what you're saying is, I need them to pa fail a panic, whereas I would like them to fail a panic. Um, in response, we see the Cave Gorilla Savages take swords in against the uh, Tully Cavaliers. With Mance um, on the Tully Cavaliers. We saw Mance them. come down to give them the vulnerable. He scores three hits with his bonuses, but we see three saves. Yeah. And then this is where it gets painful. He vulnerables, vulnerables into three saves. Um, oh... Oh, it's that's sad. <laughs> you hate to see it. You hate to see it. It's rough. Um, but he has block swords, and as we said, as much as anything, the real value. Let's not forget is take down. Uh, come, um, come, come uh, die with me. Uh, go down. Come fighting. die with me. <laughs> come dine with me. Come, come <laughs> die with me. Uh, the real value there is on uh, is on the swords control itself mm -hmm. for uh, go down fighting. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's why I would like to see it taken as much for the block effect as for the outcome it would have on the game. Um, in response, uh, in response, I think we see the, for me, we see the one move which I think costs the game. And, uh, and we'll talk about why. I know what I do now, every time. Go on, tell us what, what you're doing. I decision here. I either take bags, heal up okay. the berserkers, and get rid of the weakened. Okay. Or I take horses, and I do a retreat with the Tully Cavaliers. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I agree. Take bags, um, and I'm pretty sure that we see him take bags again. It's as much as a block because you don't. He want seems to have activated the Tully Cavaliers and attacks. Um. He's activating the Tully's Cavaliers and attacks. It's not actually the move that I thought it was. Uh, we see... Three hits. Two two wounds. That unit's dead. We see the kill. Uh, which is which is, which is is a fine play. Uh, it is quite risky. Off just four dice. And it's not one I would have played myself. But it's actually, the odds the are kill. slightly on. The odds are actually on for that kill. But interesting there on yeah. two wounds. He gets the VP, um, he takes a maneuver, and he looks in a very commanding position. Nah. At this point, I'm starting to wonder what Bazu can do. Uh, he answers <laughs> that by diving for cards, which actually I think I think is the best choice. You know, he's six two down, he's got two combat units. You need to diving dig for cards. Is about yeah. He needs to dig for he needs to dig for something that's going to change the game. Hey Bob. And uh, I think it's a very good choice to do so. Mm -hmm. And he's going to uh, he's going to vulnerable the berserkers classic. And um, yeah, so this is the Tobomot versus Bazu game we saw from the previous round, uh, Bob. Um, it's actually a previous round game. It's not live. This is uh, is recorded game. We are just doing commentary over now. Um, yeah. But yes. Uh, okay. So, we see uh, we see Sansa onto the crowns. Take crowns. Why crowns? So I think that he's trying to protect his um, trying to protect his cutthroats of all things, um, and he's taking a test uh, to to do that. He's gonna both damage the trappers um, as a way to reduce their damage output, but also stop him from being crowned himself. Yeah, but I think that what everybody's ignoring at this point is that trappers can and should be killing the um, cutthroat. 
the cutthroats in my opinion at this point the trappers should be killing the cutthroats what i really don't like about this is the endless sword like you take so horses we... just take horses that's what he's done. In response, we see Bazu come down with Endless Horde, and we see Trappers come back on, unactivated, over on this far side. Something very interesting is going to happen, and I'm not actually sure geometrically what's right. Um, he's placed himself what looks, roughly speaking, roughly speaking, I don't know whether or not it could be better, um, with his third rank facing the that objective token, which I believe is supposed to be 12 inches onto the table. No. Uh, are they not? Is that is that the question? Are they actually just over 12 inches onto the table? The, the castle walls are not 12 inches wide. Of course. And the tokens so are for placed. For that exact reason, he actually can't march and claim the token. I wasn't sure yes. whether or not the token was misplaced. No. Or the unit was misplaced. Because when I saw it happen, I thought that trapper is going to be able to come on and claim that objective straight away. And we'll see later on that actually they don't. And uh, and that things are going to get really close. Tobo takes money bags at this point finally as his last choice, and he heals up these um, cutthroats. But I really don't like the choice. Um, I think that, that you I have think to. That it should go on to the berserkers. Yeah, I think you have to, or even the Tully Cav, you have to assign those 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 cutthroats as to being dead now. Like they are and just more dead. More importantly, and more importantly. Yeah, they are still dead. Even if you heal them, they're still a dead unit. They're yep. still going to get shot in the flank by trappers, and they're still going to be testing on a flank test, morale test. Yeah, okay, you can change the amount of wounds. Howland, um, Howland coming down and activating first rather than Sansa to put the minus one attack onto the trappers was fine. In my opinion, Howland coming down and it you know, prevents that damage output. But ultimately, you should have been taking horses anyway rather than that. That crowns test was a waste of time. Um, yeah. And we see Surrounded Exposed come out. And we see the horses. I'm guessing this is the panic token effect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So he's using Surrounded Exposed. He only has one unit within range. Uh, he has horses, though. And uh, and therefore, we will see... Um, the, we'll so see uh, the, uh, the... You asked the, me this. Panic token come down. You asked me this at the very start of the game. Do I believe that this is uh, a viable play? And I do believe that this is allowed. Okay, I do believe that this is allowed. I never play this card like this, personally, because I'm not sure that it's allowed. Mm -hmm. So you, it takes a little while, the players discuss, mm -hmm. uh, but they choose, and in the end we see the panic. Now the panic basically says, if I get your, hit. Heal, your heal doesn't matter, because yeah. if I do one wound, you're dead anyway, basically. So whether you had one wound or four wounds doesn't matter. That heal didn't do anything for you. That money bags could have and should have been used elsewhere um, because I can just ensure a kill based off flank-based panic with a panic token. Mm -hmm. And uh, for anybody who's in chat right now and thinking this one's over, it's definitely not, so stick around. It may be 6-2 um, or something like that. But and uh, the free folk may look uh, up against the wall, but things are about to get super, super interesting. I know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> I already know exactly what's going to happen this turn. Um, and I say I know, I've not seen this game, guys. I've not seen this game, but I can tell what is going to happen because it is the play and the mark of somebody, and this game is setting up for it. Somebody who is not 100% certain what their opponent's list has in it exactly exactly and and yeah. i i've said I've, I've mentioned it earlier i'm not going to say any more about it but um i fully expect the berserkers to be obliterated and at the end of this turn you're going to see both stormcrow units get very low if not dead and this unit of trappers is going to kill dogs or tully cavaliers next turn calling it now i can see that that's exactly what's going to happen so we see the panic fail. Uh, yeah. He doesn't even need the token in the end. He's done two wounds with the attack, but one was enough. And uh, and we see that unit get destroyed. Mm -hmm. And they've done it without having to use their traps. That means North that, uh, that Summer is absolutely terrified to make a move. Okay, there's a one in three chance that Summer survives. But is it a risk you're ever willing to take now that it costs you a VP? North in response, remembers. We actually see North remembers, which is a big play. 
a game, <sighs> if you have that in hand, if you controlled swords, things would be much, much better right now. You're losing wounds yeah. everywhere, and you want that other effect. But we see the Tully Cavaliers unactivate themselves. Just taking swords is such a good play in the situation that he was in at yeah. the start of this round. It was just such a good play. Yeah, it and was I... a much more consistent play. We can see what he was playing for with the rear charge on Shaggy and how even, um, you know, statistically, it's in his favor to get that kill. But your swords play is so much more reliable. It's not just that, that as well, mm. right? It's not just that. The Tully Cavaliers, although they wouldn't have killed the Cave Dwellers, they'd have put them onto no rank, so he could have done it with Howland. And then yeah. hitting on fives, fours back. Like, yeah, exactly. They might hit exactly. you, but, you know, you're probably going to be all right. We see a successful charge, and it's at this point that I had forgotten, you know, I'd forgotten all of what style was going on, and discussing it slightly with him afterwards as well. Tobo Mott has entirely forgotten what Staya does. Is entirely forgotten that go down fighting exists, and an attack which I thought was going to go very well uh, can go we well. See, uh, this Dire can Wolf's go well. Fervor, uh, gets played against the um, horrific visage. Against the horrific visage, which again, swords effect would have had a bonus on, uh, would have done wounds, but no, nope, don't control swords, um, and we see. A decent charge. Seven hits. Seven hits. That's going to be on sixes. Six dead. <laughs> Called it. Six dead. Um. And uh, and at this point we see a um, a flank and corpse pile minus two test against their morale of seven. Um, or is it six? Uh, seven, uh, but they're plus two from Stalwart. But they've got the plus two from Steyr. And uh, we see D3 wounds come back. He's just rolled it, which is enough to do his two wounds that that unit has left. And more importantly, we see a test at plus two. At this point, I've entirely forgotten what Steyr does. I see a seven come out. I think, wow, okay, units wiped out, and the Tully Cavaliers disappear. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> no, you just died, and the Tully Cavaliers are fine. And then I finally mouse over Steyr and remember who he is and what he does, and figure that you just go down fighting your unit. They are dead. And not only that, but the Stalwart has kept them alive. Yep. It is a huge swing of things. And it is massive that he's forgotten what go down fighting does, and he's forgotten how valuable swords is this round. Yeah, chat is quiet today, Bob. Chat is quite quiet today. The usuals have all been here. You'll be glad to know, but not many people in chat today. Um, this yeah. is absolutely a case of need. You need to know and understand your opponent's army. And Steyr is lesser played than Harmer, so you know. And uh, yeah, we still kingdom. He did just hit that seven. At this point, I'm I'm honestly sitting and screaming at this the 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 the, the recording, saying, "You're dead. Take your models off. <laughs> Why are we still here? Take your damn models off." <laughs> until uh, until I finally remember uh, that Steyr is uh, an absolute powerhouse. And uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still literally trying to figure out what's happened. And then, there then I realize, go. okay, you've got stalwart and go down fighting. Yeah. By the way, this is what makes Osha ridiculously good. Because Osha is go down fighting for one point and you get a dire wolf. <laughs> exactly. Again, that is the same, the exact same arguments can be made about Shaggy Dog, which are I'd buy Rick on an Osha for one point anyway. Yeah, you know, you want swords as aren't Starks. free. Like you know, people, people say, "Oh, the wolves aren't free." You paid a point for them. Oh, what about this, 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 this? No, when you account for the values of those attachments alone, they are worth the point you paid points you paid for them. Mm -hmm. And the VP downside is not anywhere near comparable to how strong the dire wolf is and what it brings in terms of an activation and stuff like that. Just look at just look at what the um, 
what the King's Guard bring. They're like a ten plus point unit, but they cost six points. Yeah. Um, for the extra VPs that they give up, but like the Direwolves is totally different. Like this, you know. Yeah. There's not much. Night Guard cost three. Okay, so the point is, is Bob, is that Ghost is fair at three points. Ghost and John are fair at three points. The attachment cost has a value of roughly two, and it costs three because of the go because of the dog. Mm -hmm. All the Stark ones are costed at what they would cost, and the dog is free. Yeah. So that's where our issue comes from. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be back in a second, Carlo. I will still be talking, but the dog has just thrown her ball underneath the oven um so ah. and they need someone really really tall like mickey to go and get it underneath the oven i have to reach underneath um right so um yeah this uh this berserkers the, the problem is you've got here is the berserkers right now that the attacks come back from steer and we see three wounds being taken onto the berserkers the problem is so if you attack yeah. you will lose d3 models go down Exactly. Go down fighting. Go down fighting has once again reared its ugly head. So we see Steyr take the first attack, massively weakening the Berserkers in response to the Tully Cavalier charge. And he's got him within one wound. At this point, it is absolutely assured mutual destruction if he makes the attack. Um, I believe they think about it for quite a long time. He will almost guaranteed do four wounds and guaranteed take a wound back and be dead. I believe the conclusion he comes to is that it's worthwhile. I actually disagree, um, simply because he currently controls the objective. If he just sits tight, he will score a VP. Um, if he does, if he attacks, it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. If it weren't for Endless Horde, I would be willing to make this attack. But because of Endless Horde, we're looking like we're not going to be able to wipe out the free folk. Those trappers at full health are not going to die this game. No. So. It's going to come down to VPs, and you've chosen to go for a one-for-one -one trade rather than just go one VP up. Yeah, I uh, I personally do not like this play uh, from, as you say, you, there's no threat whatsoever by just holding Bran. Um, you run the risk of losing the unit at the start of the next turn, but I believe that that is irrelevant, right? Does it matter if he loses the unit at the start of the next turn? Because if as long as he can heal up the um, the storm crows, it shouldn't matter. The VPs are strongly in his favor, and he does still control. Well, he currently controls three points. Um, Four. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, he could look to control, control all five this turn, or it's going to be difficult. Uh, he does run the risk of being, <sighs> you know entirely uh covered by trappers what the crazily enough the one thing that um bazu has left is trappers and the one thing that uh tobo mott has left is dogs and that is a hard counter advanced dogs versus trappers that are covering them with traps is not a situation you want to be in as a stock player and is very well done to achieve that by bazu in my opinion Lots of people would have focused the dogs to try and remove the activation. But instead, what he's done is he's caged them into situations where they can't do anything and they're scared to move. I've done this before and then um, they've moved and gone and got a victory point and I've rolled a one on the damage and they just run away. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you're like, well, oh well, that's that then. We see, uh, we, we see Tarbo finally make the choice. He takes the horrific visage, which, of course, you know, was not a, a, a big deal. Was something that we didn't even particularly discuss. We see uh, a ton of attacks coming from these berserkers. Roll the dice. Yeah, I'd have liked to taking the extra point VP this turn. Definitely. Which now I think about it. Oh, we have to check that. He uses the weakened. I mean, why not? You know, it's, it's interesting. Doesn't even want to survive. <laughs> you know, he he's got exactly a rank left. So either he dies and he goes down fighting, or he survives and he doesn't go down fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, we see both both trays get removed, and um, and we see ourselves um, 
there's some kind of VP issue here, but uh, yeah, it should be, uh, we're up to 7.5. Seven, seven, five. Seven, five at this point. We see the trappers march up, and we have the bit where we discussed about whether or not they'd be able to cover the token. They don't end up so, but most importantly, they've gotten Shaggy Dog into their traps. Mm -hmm. um, they have them completely covered, and even they're in his rear, so... If the shot is actually not even that bad. Yeah, the shot, the shot's enough to kill them, kill him as well. Way, way improved in their chances of getting a kill with a shot or a charge, thanks to the rear. Um, so it's a really nice position to be in. The dog really doesn't want to be in it. The natural, the natural response is to turn and face, but that's a movement and will get you trapped. Do you know what would have worked really well if if he'd have done this right? If he'd have taken horses with Howland, or. Like, I really think, and I don't want to, like, really throw a load of shade out here, but I really think Tobo Mott misplayed a lot of the NCU tactics board at the start of this round. Now, knowing that he'd forgotten about Steer... This round, allowing... If you if you take a long, hard look at what position you're in, how, how, how strong an advantage you have, and then consider what places on the tactics board will just shore up your position... It shows how the charge was not worth the risk that it that it had. Yes, you could put the game away for sure by getting that kill on those uh, cave dweller savages, but you give up the three to two advantage on the tactics board. You give up all the zones that, when you look at your own tactics cards, you really wanted to control swords. You really wanted to deny horses and lots of other options that were available to you. You've given up the flow entirely um, to uh, to Bazu, and he's done really well to get all the zones that he wanted. Yep. Um, so we see the end of the turn roll round, and uh, Tobamuk goes to nine. Um, now, these walls are going to come in handy. Uh, interesting. Magda Khan. Um, yeah. Some GUI um, interface some improvements gooey. for the mod. We we obviously don't act, we don't do the mod. Um, bartender in the main Discord is the first to ask if uh, if you're looking for some stuff. Then you know he does he does respond and he does build the things that people want. So, I think uh, the the only reason he didn't include a panic thing as a as a general rule of thumb why the panic dice is still in the game is because it's a bit of a nightmare for it to actually function properly. Um, and clear the other settings because it, it would have to effectively clear I, the I think, other settings. I think, the thing is, is, uh, I think the real difficulty is that D3s don't actually exist in the no, in, in, in tabletop in general. Um, the D3 is uh, like a specific custom dice, and you can't just have it spawned. Mm -hmm. um, we see we see our final end of round shots come in, and we see um, and we see the wolf having uh, uh, throwing in an extra wound in on that uh, Rick on. Um, set of stone unit. throws. That mm -hmm. unit's down on two wounds. This is very important. When we now look at where the map is and what's going on, um, we see another five hits on the far stone crow unit. For what Things it's worth, really dicey. For what it's and worth, now go on. I always roll my opponent's hits because it's like I'm doing the hits to you. Now you roll yeah. them. They have for the whole game done their been doing their own hits. Yeah. Uh, so it is consistent the way they've chosen. Yeah, exactly, to do it. but. He's rolled f three yeah. every time, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's true. He has done a lot of damage to himself. Um, and Two more wins. suddenly, suddenly, we see that the game, um, remind me, were, are we 9-6, nine, 9-5? Nine, 9-5. Nine, nine, five. Nine, five. Nine, five. But every single one of those Stark units is in a bad, bad place. He needs to score himself one more VP without giving up too many VPs. I'll be honest and with you. you. I'll be honest with you. Your problem is the wolves here are going to get killed by the trappers. Two VPs. Yep. Nine, seven. And then even if, I mean, this isn't round six. Is this round six or round five? This is round five. This is round five? Yeah. The castle walls can kill these two units off. Yeah. And he only needs to kill the two units off. So, Bazu begins by taking uh, Mance, which is a great choice because he uh, throws down a vulnerable token uh, while he replaces the letters with the zones effect. Okay. I think that this 
is I think that this opens up the window for Tobo to survive. Tobo Mott's bag straight away. Tobo Mott should be responding right now with bags to heal this the heal this Stormcrow unit. It is its survival is one hundred percent what decides this game right now. Yeah. You, if um, you survive with that unit, he wins the game at the end of the round. It's as simple as that. Exactly. He scores a VP, he doesn't get wiped out, and um and Bazu can't score enough um enough VPs to win this round. Um, he's gone to seven for the kill on Rickon. Um, but he can only pick up the other two dogs. Which is nine. But we see him take Sansa and put a crown test onto the trapper unit, which seems a terrible choice to me. You can't if if they were within kill range, then it's great because you keep uh you keep Simmer alive, but instead he fails. We see him take some wounds, but it's absolutely inconsequential. No, yeah, this is just traps. irrelevant. This is They'll just still irrelevant. protect them. He takes um, three, four wounds, whatever it is. But that's enough to mean that's that 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 summer is in trouble. That was. I don't understand that play. You one hundred percent take bags. Now we see him cover bags, and in response, he's going to take more shots onto Rickon and Asha. Uh, sorry, onto um, onto the mirror storm crows. Um, but at this point, it's already game over because now um, the two wolves die. can't afford to come off this objective. So he has to stay and has to hope that he survives. I have another opening play for you as well, right? Yeah. After the initial we'll Mance kills, yeah? You know what you do, right? You activate mirrors. You can heal them. You can take bags and heal. Or you take horses and move off. You just take horses and retreat. Because you, you have more you have more activations with the two dogs remaining on the field. It forces him back on. It move forces on him to have activation. to shoot one of the dogs early to get the activation advantage to be able to have shots at Rickon's unit. And if you're if the unit if you're forcing to shoot the dogs to try and win, then you're not necessarily moving on to the objective to try and win. Mm. Yeah. Howland blocks with swords, but because there's no control on the opposite side, because there's no control of objectives, there's nothing he can do with it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and we're just gonna see everything basically get picked apart here it is a massive comeback and i think there were still plays for him to win i think bazoo's doing incredibly well to stick it out and get into this situation and uh and yeah it, 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 it it's the crazy comeback that honestly i didn't think was going to happen when he was five two six two down mm -hmm. when he was uh even when he was nine five down i still didn't think that this game was looking favorable to him Endless Horde has been a huge game-changing play. Um, Go down fighting. Positional play, positional play on these um, on these trappers down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Very, very important. And that the trappers have just denied these direwolves has completely um, won this game over. I oh the one means it's two wounds with the wolf. The wolf has come in absolutely clutch at the end. Causing a double wound, uh, Tarbo doesn't realise it until he's reminded by Bazu. That's a wound. Yeah. That's a point. But more importantly, now you've just got a pair of dogs who, if they move, two out of three they die. Yep. The thing is, is that you actually have to take the risk. That's yeah, the funny Sunday, thing. Uh, there is a skin changer wolf. Um, down on the uh, the trappers the who was. have three wounds left. He's been there the whole game, and he has actually made huge, huge changes. And I wouldn't have swapped. Yeah, big brain plays. I wouldn't have swapped him for an eagle. Not in this game. Uh, mode. On, on 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 retrospect, even looking at it, no charges really mattered from Bazu's perspective. He's played a very defensive game, um, and the wolf has made game-changing plays. Mm -hmm. I do think I find picking it super up. Super interesting. 
picking well. a wolf up against Stark is actually quite important, I think, against certain Stark lists. Most of the time, I'd want to be taking Eagles. But actually, against certain Stark lists, if you know that they're going to come at you anyway, you don't need Eagles because they're going to be there. They're going to yeah. be in front of you. So what's the point? You might as well just take the Wolves. Um, and this is where I was thinking, you know, God forbid I actually think Walrus CDS is the way to go. Because um, Walrus, Clave Dweller Savages, although seven points, um, Cave Dwellers will die. But actually, if you think about it, if they're only doing eight wounds, if they do any less than eight wounds, that's less than a rank you're going to take in that attack. So all of a sudden, they actually withstand. And the thing is, with Cave Dwellers, is you only have to save one or two wounds to make them worthwhile. Doing it with Raiders doesn't matter, because Raiders aren't going to hit back. Cave Dwellers, mm. they're going to hit back. Are you gonna are you gonna be throwing down uh, weirwood trees with that as well to make sure that you definitely pass that morale check? Potentially. We're gonna are we gonna see the weirwood, the weirwood cave, cave dwellers. dweller savage walrus meta. You heard it here from hers from Mickey. Yeah. I no I I've been I mean if anyone's been watching me on the main Discord I have been pushing for CDS to come back into fashion because I really do think there's a place, and it's about under, I I run them in my torment list at the moment. Um, there is a place for cave dweller savages. So crazily enough, we see one wound from the trappers come down, which is going to be enough probably because the wolf will feel like it has to move. Uh, they've also gone over and uh, covered the token, I think. Um, but more importantly, actually, between the corpse pile and the uh, rear, he's gone and failed the morale, and that's uh, that's, that's going to put him off as well. So uh, yeah, I I yeah, personally big props big props to uh, Bazu. You know, spoiler people, some people, a lot of people in the chat already knew what the result was before the game uh, before the game went. But um, big props to him for coming with a not one hundred percent orthodox list, making choices like the wolf and making them pay off against what is known to be a very dominant list and uh, really very much meta defining. Um, and yeah, he'd done a really patient game, cave, stayed calm. I do believe he was close to throwing in the towel um, when his cave dweller savages died and when they fluffed their attack against the um, Tullys. Against the Tully Cavaliers. But, you know, like, that's why we showed that you stick in it and keep playing because he's managed to pull off a big win. I, I... They have actually completed the game. The game, um, Summer tried to move and she died. She did take the risk. Um, she took two wins. Took two wins and died. They are now just discussing, so I guess we should just wrap up yeah. uh, before uh, you know the recording goes on to me uh, showing all stuff that I, <laughs> I didn't, I'll pause I didn't it there for you. Um, yeah. I will say, I think Bazu played a stormer. Bazu, Bazu uh, I start calling them lines because uh, I think it's easier, just like in chess. Bazu saw a line and he played down that line, he played to that out, and he played it out well enough. Um, I do think that this came down to skill. I, I think this game came down to skill rather than luck because I think that Tobu Mott did not see the lines. He did not see the lines that Bazu could make, and as a yeah. result, Bazu was able to outplay him. Um, so I do yeah. believe that, that Bazu here has proven that even when he's down and out, he's still putting those effort in. Um, I think Tobu Mott may have got complacent, maybe? I but think I don't in know. round four... I think in round four, Tobo Mott played an aggressive round when actually considering he was up BPs wise mm -hmm. and um, and also massively in activations. But as we kept saying, not in wounds because he just had like these weakened units everywhere on the board. He was massively up in activations. He was massively up in VPs. I think he needed to take a moment more and not think, how can I further push my advantages? He should have considered what are the possible ways that Bazu can get back into this game? How can I deny them? And that would have been denial of swords, denial of horses, and healing your own units, the ones that matter, doubling down on like the center and your back line. Mm -hmm. Instead, he chose to, chooses to go offensive. And I think that Bazu has done very, very well to take advantage of that. He's seen a very difficult way out and played it very, very well to go and get that win in the end. 
Well, there we go, guys. Uh, huge, huge props to Bazu for making it round to uh, making it neck through to the next round where he will face off against Spleen uh, from Australia, yeah. um, which we will probably be recording, or we will get some Australian guys to uh, it's on Australian time. We'll get them to uh, stream it out there. We will keep you updated yeah. with who that ends up being and where that will be found later on. Um, That'll be Saturday morning UK time. It'd be very very late at night sunday uh, fr sorry friday us time mm -hmm. it would be um saturday evening uh for the australians yeah uh yes yeah, low key. and just in case anybody's not sure uh summer just died this is um free folk wipe win. out free folk win um crushing victory by destroying all units victory through combat yeah so uh there we go there we have it um Thank you for joining us today. It was a bit of a weird stream. We got virtually no one, and then um, we got loads more people. We got 16 viewers now. Loads of people love it. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, it is a great comeback, Loki. Well well said. Um, I do recommend if you, you're only just checking in now on the live stream, go back and watch the rest of the video. If you checking us out on YouTube, which will be going up on YouTube later on, um, you know, go back and check it out. This is an absolutely great game that Carlo got to yeah. actually experience. And I've got, obviously, experience of uh, going back through that with him today, as you will have as well. Um, yeah. I, it wasn't a perfect recording, as you saw. Um, we were actually, we weren't able to stream it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I, we couldn't not restream this game out because it has some brilliant plays in it. It's a great finish and an amazing comeback. So, yeah, I'm really glad that uh, I streamed the game. I'm really glad that I recorded it. And bazu showing why he's in the last four of the masters you know this is four best players in the world right now uh we've got larks versus open city bazu versus spleen two brilliant semi-finals coming up which will lead into a three uh three game um best of three final mm -hmm. so we'll see who takes home the crown in the end stay tuned for this week next week there's a, a stream tomorrow, seven o'clock. NRG. Seven o'clock NRG stream. Yeah, uh, Daryl is going to be on, um, and he's going to be streaming out Open City versus Larks. Um, so stay tuned for that uh, Baratheon versus Stark matchup in No Fome Pass. Um, I don't know who's co. If he's going to have any co-hosts or anything with him, uh, I guess we'll see. Um. <laughs> um, all right, so. Um, thanks a lot for joining us again, guys. Uh, check out all the NRG merch and all the, the amazing stuff that uh, the local artists around the northeast of the UK have been designing for the Northern Realms Gaming uh, Twitch channel. You can see Carlo's nice imagery just there. Um, yeah, it's a bit dark. Also designed the... Stannis, Stannis Baratheon today. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they also designed the three sales merch, if you've seen that. The same artists designed some of the stuff there. Um, thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, check out all the other YouTube videos. Obviously, check out the Song by Some Fire stats.com site. It's okay, it does some nice things, but if anything, what it's done, the, all you know, of these lists as involved in the Masters, check yeah. out what they've been playing, who's been beating who, and uh, who's still in it, and what lists they're running. Mm -hmm. See what the very best players in the world are using, yep. along with tons of other stuff. So, so thanks a lot, guys. Um, and as I said. We'll catch you in the next one. Uh, stay safe, take it easy, and catch you later.